and will be televised online. Uh, I'm excited about tonight. Uh, I've been uh, sharing with you over the last three weeks where God burdened on my heart that you can prosper in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, one of uh, the areas in which our community is being grossly impacted outside of criminal justice is uh, the economic divide. Uh, and at this point, we're really going to have to talk about strategy. And so for the last uh, two weeks, I've been bringing in different strategists and futurists who can give you uh, their angle and perspective about how it is uh, that we move forward as a people. I want to underscore to you what I have been saying. Millionaires are created in a crisis. Millionaires are created in a crisis. America saw the greatest boom of wealth after the Great Depression. I'm telling you now, there are a whole lot of people who are rubbing their hands together who are excited. We have been under quarantine for 11 weeks. You're not going to believe it. And in the ninth week, they announced on Forbes magazine, uh, they announced on MSNBC that Jeff Bezos, the head of Amazon, was pointed in the direction to be the Earth's first trillionaire. Trillionaire with a T in the middle of a crisis. You're getting ready to see a shift in how it is that real estate uh, is going to be bought and sold at a zero to a 2% interest rate. Benjamin Elijah May said that we've got to run faster or forever be left behind. I thought it was appropriate that this week, as we hallmark the 99th anniversary of the burning of uh, Tulsa Black Wall Street, that I will bring in the brother who is spearheading the revitalization of that same thumbprint for this generation and for this hour. I'm glad to have my comrade at arms, our brother Jay Morrison. Jay, welcome, glad to have you. Thank you, Pastor, I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here, happy to always work with you. It is amazing uh, that we're here to just look at the hand of God. Uh, Jay and I met five years ago in the middle of the Freddie Gray uprising. And now here we are five years later and he is still having to give the same instruction and the same direction to our people. I really have a blank canvas uh, tonight, Jay. Uh, we're really in your classroom. Uh, a professor told me uh, years ago that if you think you're gonna remember it, it's a wish. But if you write it down, it's a decision. So class is in session for everybody. We got 28 minutes. I'm yielding over to the professor. Sir, whatever you want to teach us, this is not an interview. This is a class. Uh, and so, I listen. <laughs> and I'm, I'm ready to go. The floor is yours, sir. Whatever you want to give us in this hour. All right, thank you. You know, uh, my spirit felt that, Pastor. And so I got right next to me a whiteboard. It's about to go down. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I don't go. I don't go far on a flip chart on a whiteboard because I know right. that many of our people are not only verbal but, but visual learners. And um, one of my great, my, my greatest gift, flat out, the greatest gift and talent God gave me um, was to teach and to translate. Uh, and so I want to teach and translate um, some some philosophies and ideologies uh, for us today that I know will uh, empower the body, uh, will empower believers. Um, and will empower humanity. And uh, I sit before all of you all, uh, Pastor introduced me as the founder, fund manager, and CEO of the first Black-owned real estate crowdfund in the history of America, the historic Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Uh, I sit here on our 2.6 acre campus in our 30,000 square foot Class A office space called the Legacy Center, AKA the Black House, which also housed one of Pastor's sermons a couple yes. of weeks ago. That's right. And um, we're just two miles from Tyler Perry Studio, five minutes from the world's busiest airport, Hartsville Jackson uh, International Airport. And remember, the number one rule in real estate is location, location, location. Uh, and we sit in a qualified opportunity zone and we own this building free and clear, no mortgage, no debt, owned by the people. Uh, when I say the people, I'm speaking of the 15,000 prospective partners and co-owners, group economics. Black Amazing. Wall Street, 15, over 15,000 prospective partners in under two years. Right well now, well, today, actually yesterday was our anniversary. So now two years, 
15,000 prospective partners from 22 countries. We have raised over $12.5 million of capital pledges in real life. Uh, the interesting part is that during the Freddie Gray uprising, I was on a, peak, uh, on a panel with our sister Tamika Mallory and her brother Myson and brother, uh, a cousin Jeff and Mark Lamont Hill. And during that panel, one of the Baltimore uh, natives who BET bust a, a, a busload of Bloods and Crips and Baltimore residents to New York for a panel. I was on that panel and on the panel. This is in real life. I cannot believe it. One of the members of the audience, they said, what are some solutions? And somebody said in their Baltimore accent, we need to build a Black Wall Street, yo. <laughs> and I said, if y'all want to build a Black Wall Street, I said, who here want to build a Black Wall Street? Raise your hand. I said, y'all meet me after the panel. If we're going to build a Black Wall Street, that's on my watch. And I thought that I, and, and, the, and, and the most high incubated a concept in me that to, to figure out how do we, in a transparent, regulated, and organized way, pull our dollars from non-accredited investors, accredited investors, working class, and the wealthy and entrepreneurs, and bring it together. And it took three years to incubate that idea, form the company, go through the audits, go through the SEC filing from the Freddie Gray Uprising panel. In a time like this, three years later, we IPO'd on June 1st of 2018 as the first Black-owned real estate crowdfunding in the history of America, raised millions overnight, dedicated our fund to the memory of Black Wall Street, to the memory of Marcus Garvey and the UNIA, and we went out here and showed our people in the world an example of economic unity, of group economics in real life, and we resurrected it. But I'm not done with my praise report. I'm not done with my praise report. I'm gonna teach you in a second. So when we launched this fund, we got much praise, but we also got much critiques and much criticism and much scrutiny. Is this legit? Is this a scam? Is this a fraud? Is this a scheme? And the noise came from not another community, but from our own community. Wow. And six months after launching our fund, about six or seven months, we got a knock on the door literally from the FBI and the DOJ and the SEC. And they subpoenaed us for our emails, financial records, business practices, over 50,000 emails, um, hundreds of thousands of lawyer fees, and an 18-month investigation by the SEC. Within the first eight months, the FBI, DOJ, they said, we conclude our investigation. We have no action at this time. The SEC, just last week, last Thursday, in this time, in this climate, approaching two years of our anniversary, approaching Black Wall Street Day, June 1st, when the massacre happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the SEC last week hit our attorneys and said, we concluded our investigation of Jay Morrison and the Tulsa Real Estate Fund after a year and a half, and we have no action recommended against Jay and the fund. There is no enforcement action recommended after a year and a half investigation. That is a blessing. That's a blessing. I'm so chill, I want chill. to give us, I want to give us, as we approach this lesson, as a activist, as a fund manager, as a teacher, as an entrepreneur, a real estate developer and all these titles that I wear, um, one I want to give you guys, solutions can come out of a time like this. I actually thank God for the fire. I thank God for the obstacles. I thank God for the challenges. And I thank God for times such as these because these test us, these bring us closer to God, and he's forced us to find solutions for ourselves because he already told us that faith without our works is dead. So we got to put in the work, and that work needs to be backed by strategy, us being informed, being enlightened, and having information. So as I prepare a quick lecture for us today, I also want to tell you, I stand before you not just as that fund manager and this CEO, but I stand before you as a three-time felon by the age of 21, someone that served two and a half years in prison. I stand before you as a former high school dropout. I stand before you as an alternative school graduate. I stand before you as a welfare kid, Section 8 kid, free lunch and school kid who was born to a teenage mom, was a teenage dad, a divorcee who also filed Chapter 7 bankruptcy. I done been through it all. And... God has been this good, and I've been able to climb my way out of poverty and distress by my understanding of ownership, 
by my understanding of financial instruments and by my understanding of some philosophies I'm going to try to give us and cram in and teach us today. Now, I want to give the new birth community, which I'm a member. So I'm just not an expert coming in. I'm, I'm a new birth member coming in. That's right. And, and I want to also just give, again, all those who are watching some gems and some games. So we believe in a philosophy here at the Black House at Legacy Center and us being the CEO of our last name. So I want to give us three quick lessons real quick. The first lesson is on building wealth, building wealth out of even this kind of climate. I told you, we just created a fund that raised over 12 and a half million in the last two years, but it was birthed out of the Freddie Gray uprising. So what can we create out of a time like this, right? Where there's, where there's chaos, there's also opportunity. You just mentioned it with Jeff Bezos. Billionaires have made more money in this time because of their knowledge base than, than, than the average person because they understand these climates. So one thing I want to give us is the mindset of what we call being the CEO of our last name. Pastor, what's the CEO? Chief Executive Officer. That's right. The Chief Executive Officer. And who are they to the organization? They're the head. They're the leader. That's right. The CEO is defined as the leader and visionary of an organization. So what we got to start doing as a community, we talk about bridging the wealth gap, is someone has to step up for the Morrisons, for the Bryants, for your last name. Someone got to step up and say, where are them Morrisons going to be at in the year 2070? Where are them Morrisons going to be at in the year 2050? Because if we didn't inherit wealth, if we didn't inherit an education on wealth, it's up to us to be intentional, meaning doing it on purpose for us to build our family's wealth. It ain't on nobody else to do it for us. Faith without works is dead. So if you want wealth to be your outcome, if you believe that God is giving us abundance, if you believe in Deuteronomy, God told us to go possess the land. If you believe in these things, where is your works in order to materialize that and realize that in your lifetime? You're not going to do it just off hope. The work is first being informed. As a CEO, to be a good leader or visionary for your organization, you must understand how to maneuver the business, how to lead the family forward. So I'm going to give us some things we must know for those of us who are willing to adopt to be the leader of our family. I've done intentional things with my family, like at, like at Thanksgiving. I sat my whole family down. I got my grandfather's permission. He's he, he a patriarch. I said, Grandpa, I know some stuff. After, the, after we all eat, can we sit down and make everybody pull a credit report? Can we sit down and do a life insurance check? Wow. Do you understand that there's a $1.2 trillion wealth gap per family? If we looked at, not, not, we know there's more white Americans than black Americans. If we went pro rata, family for family, there's a $1.2 trillion wealth gap. But do you know if we could increase the net worth of black families by just $75,000 in five years, that we could, if we can increase the net worth of black families, the median net worth of black households right now is $17,500. The median net worth of European American or white families is $111,000, right? So you got black net worth, about 17,000, I think it's like $900. White net worth, who's number one? It's not a black white thing, it's a first and last thing. So last place, that's us, 450 years every year on year, last place. Not of our own fault, but it's where we at right now. So we gotta huddle up and figure out our plan, right? Remember, a CEO is a leader and a visionary. So to be a leader, you must have a vision, you must have a plan, and you must have a desired destination. That's how you lead. A vision, a plan, and a desired destination. And you must have the energy and the information, the strategy, to get your organization or your family here. So if your goal is to increase your family net worth by $100,000, how do you do that? Or might be by $100 million. How do you do that? So if the black net worth is $17,900, white net worth is about $111,000.
Pastor, if we could increase black net worth by about $75,000 or $100,000, we could decrease the pro rata wealth gap by 50% in five years, just by increasing black net worth by 75,000 per household. Jay, how could we do that? So easy, check this out, Pastor. And new birth family and all those watching, check this out. If black families in America if they were just to be intentional to get a life insurance policy for $100,000, Pastor, do you know that every black family in America, if they got a life insurance policy for $100,000 plus the $17,500 that we're, our net worth is right now, that we'd have $117,500, which would supersede the white net worth of $111,000, and all we got to do is live and then die? What we gonna do wow. anyway? Wow, wow. If we spend more time or more money getting a life insurance premium, whole life, term life, IUL, I'll teach that another time. I got, a, I got multiple seven figure policies on my life right now that I know my daughter, Anna, that was born while I was in prison in upstate New York. She was in trap houses while I was bagging up quarter kilos of coke but she goes to Wash U in St. Louis, one of the top colleges in the country. But I know when she go, my heirs will have, inherit seven figures. So if, if black people, instead of gifts on Christmas, Valentine's Day, birthdays, you, 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 you party every birthday. Oh, I'm 31. 31? <laughs> That's an important age? If we, spent, if we spent less money on liability, things that go down in value, invested into a future asset like life insurance and said, you know what? I know for a fact, you wanna to go to heaven, don't you? Yeah. You're gonna die, but when you go, you're leaving treasures for your heirs. You know why? Because First Timothy said a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. I love it. So how do you do that, right? The faith, we got it. Here's the action. So now I'm gonna give you an action step. If you wanna get a free life insurance quote, totally free, you can actually go through the whole website, pick your policy premium and have life insurance as soon as next week and do it all online, ain't gotta talk to nobody. Or you can call our team and figure it out. But check it out, I'm gonna give you guys a, a resource. Right here. Legacycenter.com. Free life insurance quote, right on our website. What I'm saying, what I'm saying why this is such an important strategy and why I'm sweating and yelling and being passionate about this is guys, it's a layup, it's not overnight wealth. I understand we got burden right now. I can get to the quick money in a second. But for long-term wealth, you got insurance. Everybody watching this. You got insurance on your cell phone. Your kids got insurance on their cell phone, but you ain't got insurance on your life. Wow. You went and bought all those Christmas gifts, and if you would have died December 26th, your kids would have to sell the gifts to bury you. Wow. A chicken fry to bury you to send you off how you thought you want to look because you did no estate planning because you are not a leader and visionary for your family. You are a liability for your family. Amazing. And we all have the ability to do this. If you increase, if you just do this and pay it off, and if you are broke your whole life and say, you know what? I'm sacrificing mine for the family. Listen, I can't do much, but I could pay $80 a month to a premium, $200 a month to a premium to make sure we got $100,000 to a quarter million dollar policy. So when I go, y'all will be better off with a better head start than the one I got. This is basics. I love it. That's long-term money. Legacycenter.com. Free life insurance quote. And Pastor, let me know when my time is up, please. Oh, I'm getting close. You got 10. All right. Thank you, sir. Another thing I want to give you all, I'm going to give you two quick lessons in 10 minutes. Watch, watch this. Two shorter term strategies. I want to get us to understand the value of owning real estate, owning the land, what I call being lord of the land. Most of us throw around a term, landlord, landlord, landlord. When you really look at what landlord means, it means you're the lord of the land. 
You are the big homie. You are the author of the land. So I want to give us some game on real estate real quick. Why real estate? Jane, can you give me a paper towel, please, or a wealth rag? I got a wealth rag laying around. Thank you. Why real estate? Most of us say, you know what? I don't really want to be in real estate, Pastor. That's to say, I don't want to be in real estate. I'm not in the real estate. I say, where are you watching this at right now? What is that? Where's the place you worshiped at last Sunday? What is that? <laughs> where do your kids go to school? What is that? Where were you born in? What was that? Where do you go to work? Where did you stay your last vacation? Thank you, sir. We think that we're not in real estate, but every single one of us is in real estate. Some of us are the owners and some of us are the customers. You have no choice but to be in real estate. Real estate ain't nothing but the earth. The earth is one big ball of land. Whoever owns the most land wins. Here's why. I'm going to give you why and how in less than seven minutes. One, why when we own real estate, it goes up in value. This means it appreciates in value. So as re over time, supply and demand, God ain't making no more land, real estate goes up in value historically. Because again, we, we, we all vegan now, we eating healthier, we taking pills, you're living longer, making more babies, but there's still the same amount of land on earth. So supply and demand of land. As you, it goes up in value, you end up creating what's called equity, which you can use to go invest in more real estate or invest into your family. So you got appreciation, one reason to invest in real estate. Two, you can buy multifamilies. You can even buy a four family property, live in one unit, rent the others out, live for free. Matter of fact, pastor, you could buy a four unit property with a store attached and buy it 3% down to 3.5% down even in today's market. You could live for free, rent the others out, or receive cash flow from these. So the second reason why I invest in real estate is cash flow. Next reason, simple, power and control. Be a lord of the land, own our communities. The only reason why our communities are being gentrified because we don't own them. Wow. You can't tell somebody that own their land what they should do. If we sell everything, we don't own nothing. We keep cashing out. Right. Power and control. Also, when you own real estate, not only do you own the property, Pastor, you own the air rights above the real estate. The right to build up. And you own the mineral rights below the real estate. The right to build down, dig down, agriculture, oil, diamonds, gold, whatever. Build a, a parking lot. You have these rights from owning real estate. And then we're not even done. You have multiple tax advantages from owning real estate assets. And as I said, it's not that hard to do. So we well, I got three minutes, Pastor? Yes, sir. All right. Three minutes, y'all. Crash course time. Fast track. This is this our no huddle offense. All right. Three minutes. So boom. Some things I want to give you guys in regards to how you can buy, right? So, man, it's like four lessons I want to give. How do I do this? Boom. Okay. So, how you can buy. One is you can have multiple co-borrowers on one property. So, instead of you guys, all your family renting, sacrifice like other communities do, pile y'all butt up in the house that y'all own, and use all your incomes to buy one property and buy a four unit together. One. Two, you can use the future rental income from these units to actually add on to your income. So a bank will say, all right, you make 40000 a year. Well, these rental units bring you another 20000 a year, so we'll add that onto your income to qualify you. Three, you can use Section 8 and government vouchers to qualify for a mortgage. Wow. In real life. Right? So, Boom. Those are some perks onto how you can buy. And again, like I said, there's even low down payments and even 100% financing available through USDA, veteran loans, or government subsidies. Uh, I got a minute and a half left, y'all. Next thing, I know you're crying about your credit. Shut up. Your credit's not your problem. Strategy is your problem. When it comes to owning, our RBC strategy is this. All credit can be rebuilt 
And sorry for saying shut up. I teach strong. My bad. I forgot what audience I'm My bad. My bad, family. All credit can be rebuilt, restored, repaired, and recycled, used again. Check it out. No matter how bad your credit is, you can always rebuild it, restore it, repair it, and use it again. Stop complaining about your credit. Get to work on it. Same website, LegacyCenter.com. We got credit services. Next, real quick, focus on your personal credit, but also your family credit. My daughter has nearly an 800 score, about 20-something years old. Focus on your business credit and focus on strategic credit partners. Why is that? Because, Pastor, if me, if, if I try to flip, and God forbid the flip don't work out or the business don't work out. If I was working on my daughter and my wife's credit all along and my business credit and had credit partners, even if I fail on an idea, I just substitute my wife in, she on her next business, and we keep it going. That's how the wealthy get wealthy. They use strategy. They don't complain. They're not happy. Oh, I got an 800 score. You got an 800 score, but they got 800 in the bank. Credit is to be used. It's a paper game the wealthy made. There's 230 trillion of credit and debt in the world, only 50 trillion of cash, coins, and currency. Stop thinking that having an emotional tie to credit. Use it to build wealth. If you need credit, real estate, or business lessons, here's your other resource. And I'm done. Jay Morrison, my school, it's an online school, academy.com. I have a certification program over uh, 40 hours of lectures, 80 lectures, tests, quizzes, assessments on no money down deals, evaluating deals, home buyer 101, credit mastery, entrepreneur 101, LLC formation, all that. I dump everything I know into my school. And this is my crash course lesson for the Newburgh audience today. Thank you for the platform, Pastor. Give them that website again, please. Yes, sir. jmorrisonacademy.com for education and for legacycenter.com. Gene, is that, is that uh, camera on here? LegacyCenter.com for life insurance quote, credit services, tax services, or to even see about being a member of our building here, right here in East Point, Atlanta, Georgia, the Legacy Center. We offer co-working memberships once this thing opens back up at just $99 a month to house your business here and, and to work here with us. I love it. I uh, hope that uh, you all got it. This will be on uh, our site. If you jumped on late, I need you to share it. Uh, I hope, Jay, that you will consider uh, doing a part two, because I know you had to do a drive-by shooting, uh, but I, I need you to finish up for us. Uh, but I appreciate your gift. I want all of you, please, go to jmarsonacademy.com. jmarsonacademy.com. You can get the real deep dive. This was just an introductory uh, level. I sat in a hotel ballroom. Uh, with him five years ago, uh, and he gave this same level of intensity, the same level of passion. I met so many of his uh, students, mentees, and alumnus at the grand opening. They came from all over the country. They're being empowered and equipped, and I'm glad that he's a part of New Bear family. Love you, brother. Uh, love you, too, Pastor. Ryan, and I hope everybody go to everybody go to J. Marston Academy. Those of you who are part of New Birth family, I'm starting in 30 minutes. It's black out I'm doing a special session on what that means, how we move forward, and then later tonight at Just Whitmer's, what does the revolution mean to the body of Christ?